Okay, welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the smash factor. So we'll call this SN, and it's simply equal to the ball speed divided by club speed. So of course we're talking about the ball after it's launched after the shot and the club head speed when it makes contact with the ball. Now a typical value for this, for the golfer Justin Thomas, and I'll put a link in the description in which they actually talk to Justin Thomas about his smash factor, is around 1.52. So what that means is if he's swing with a head speed of 100 miles per hour, which is reasonable for a driver, then the ball will travel at 152 miles per hour. So he's effectively launching the ball by a factor of 1.5 faster than what he's swinging. So why is that? Why does the ball tend to go faster when hit with a driver? So to understand this smash factor, we have to look into collisions a little bit. So the first type is sort of an ideal collision, which is called an elastic collision. It's very important in a lot of contexts. And a good example would be billiard balls, pool balls. So they're just hard, rigid objects. And if you smash one into the other, in which the first one is not moving, in a perfect ideal sense, if it's a head-on collision, in, in the next time, the first one will have stopped moving, having transferred all of its momentum and energy into the second ball, and it will progress along with exactly the same speed as the original ball. So in this case, there's two things that are conserved. Momentum is conserved. Momentum P. And kinetic energy is conserved. So those two expressions are conserved only in this ideal elastic collision case in which some hard rigid object does not deform and passes all of these two quantities from the first to the second object. Now the vast majority of collisions are better thought of as inelastic collisions. And the main distinguishing factor is that the kinetic energy is not conserved. So if we say the kinetic energy initial is not equal to the kinetic energy in the final case. Now, why does that happen? Where does the energy go? Now, effectively, energy can never really be lost completely. It just has to transfer to a different form. In this case, the kinetic energy simply goes into the deformation. It goes into the ball physically compressing, as well as the club head physically compressing. It takes energy to change the shape of the ball, and that absorbs energy, sort of storing it like a spring in the ball and in the club head. Now we fortunately can use some of that compression as sort of a spring which helps launch the ball faster and it's from that that we get the smash factor. That energy stored in the ball's deformation can be used to launch it faster than the club was originally traveling. So I'd encourage everyone to take a look at some of the slow motion footage of what happens when a golf ball hits a club head at high speeds, but we get something roughly like this. The golf ball actually deforms quite a bit, pancakes if you will, and you get a slight indentation in the club head since it's also a deformable material. And then once it's released, the ball has a tendency to spring and elongate itself in the opposite direction before pretty quickly returning to this round spherical shape. Another way to quantify this deformation during a collision is to calculate this thing called the coefficient of restitution, which we'll call lowercase e, and it's simply equal to the difference in the final velocities of two objects that we'll call 1 and 2, uh, divided by the difference in the initial velocities between objects 1 and 2, and the absolute value of those. So in an ideal case, in the elastic case, uh, this coefficient would be equal to 1. So this is the case of 
kinetic energy conservation. If the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final, then the velocities would end up being the same, where all the velocity initial is transferred perfectly to the final state, and E equals 1. But in fact, in our case, due to the deformation, we have a certain amount of energy being lost, and so this E, the coefficient, ends up being less than 1. And if you run the numbers, you can find out that the energy lost in the collision due to the deformation is 1 minus this coefficient squared. So if E is 1, again, in the perfectly elastic case, the energy lost is 1 minus 1, or 0. Energy is, in fact, conserved. Now, all this is to say that for one reason or another, the golf ball tends to travel faster than the club head speed. And that's something we could measure. You can use something like a track man to find that initial position of the ball. Or maybe you could do some rigorous calculation based on the length of the club and the springiness of all the objects involved. But let's say we can track down both the initial velocity of the ball and this launch angle using some of the information from our last few videos. Ultimately, what we want to apply this to is a basic theory of kinematics, which will predict some sort of a ball path. And ultimately, what we're going to want to find, importantly, would be this final distance, the range, if you will, that the ball can travel. And for the simplest kinematic model, the only force that we're going to need to worry about, and the subject of our next video, will be gravity. Why doesn't the ball just fly straight off into space? Well, that's what happened if you would be golfing on an asteroid. But here on Earth, gravity, a relative constant, will just cause it to arc back down in a parabolic path, and we'll see how those equations work out in the next video.